the wheel of pain. The strong men have seen it on social media. They have certainly heard about it. On Thursday night, they finally got a chance to get their hands on it. And after watching some of them trying to push this thing around, the wheel of pain will be a worthy challenge for the strongest men on the planet. Welcome to the second and final day of the 2019 Arnold Strongman Championship, everybody. I'm Sean Woodland with Dr. Bill Crawford. Thank you for joining us, Bill. You have been all around the world. You've seen all kinds of strongman competitions with many different kinds of implements. How does this one compare to the stuff you've seen in your career? This is the most epic implement ever in the history of Strongman. Not only is it beautiful, it's heavy. Looking forward to seeing the athletes get after this thing in just a little bit, and the Wheel of Pain will be the first of three events that we go through today. We start here, we move over to the Austrian Oak, and then we close things out with the Stone Shoulder. Five total events over two days in this competition. Yesterday, if you missed it, it was all about one man, Hafthor Bjornsson, the mountain, he was dominant. In the deadlift, the opening event, he broke the record he set last year on just his second lift, 1,045 pounds. Then on his third and final lift, he went after the record, the heaviest deadlift ever, 1,105 pounds. He just couldn't quite get it. Would have been worth 50 grand, but he does win the event, locks up 10 points. Event number two, the Husafell Stone Carry, more of the same from Bjornsson. He beats Alexei Novikov's best mark that lasted until the very last man, and Bjornsson goes two for two on day one, and he is your leader with 20 total points coming into day number two. He leads Ronald Heinle and Martins Lisi's by seven points, and Brian Shaw, the man who we thought would push Bjornsson for the lead, is eight points back in fourth place. We started this competition with 10 men. We are now down to nine. Unfortunately, Canada's Jean-Francois Caronville had to withdraw after just his first deadlift attempt. Yes, yeah, very disappointing for J.F. Caron. It's the beginning of the season, and he wants to qualify for next year's Arnold. It appears to be a nagging injury that he got at the Arnold Strongman Classic in Santa Monica. A disappointing finish for Jean-Francois Caron. Nothing disappointing about the performance from Hafthor Bjornsson. He was, once again, dominant. The only question really remaining for him is, can he win all five events? No one has ever done that here at the Arnold Strongman Classic, and there is no reason to think that he won't be the first. He's had a very dominating performance. I've never seen someone with this kind of lead after the first two events. I've never really even seen anyone have three wins in, in the five events in the Arnold Strongman Classic. He matches up very well for the remaining events. His height and his weight make it a good chance that he has a good push on the uh, Wheel of Pain. Also, he's a very good overhead presser for the Austrian Oak. And then the stone shouldering, he's from Iceland. He's been training. This is up first though, the Wheel of Pain, and it is massive, 21 feet tall, 40 feet in diameter, and it weighs 10 tons. And when we came out here, I know you said this thing has been making your nostrils flare a little bit. You've been wanting a chance to push it. We're going to give you that chance so you can tell the people what you think will be the keys to success to this event. So Dr. Bill, good luck on pushing the Wheel of Pain. All right, well, that looked pretty difficult. What do you think these athletes are gonna to have to do in order to be successful pushing this thing around? Number one is leverage. You wanna be on the end of the implement and you wanna get your hips down. Just like when you're playing football, the low man wins. That leverage is gonna create the force to get this thing moving forward. Number two is you have to overcome pain. This is the wheel of pain. You have to just embrace what's gonna to happen to you and you've got a minute to do it. And here are the competitors who will be embracing that pain. Jerry Pritchett will be up first, followed by Brian Shaw. The starting order is based on your finish in the prior event. It goes from last place to first, and that means that Hafthor Bjornsson, the man who won both events on day one, will go last. Jerry Pritchett will be the first man up, and I know that after pushing that thing, Bill, that there are some other things that you, know, you really think that these athletes are going to have to keep in mind, especially from a technique standpoint with their shoulders. Yes, uh, actually pushing it with your hands out after trying it, I would be a little more inclined to put my shoulders directly on the implement to push because that way you're not wearing out those relatively weaker muscles of your shoulder girdle and you're really pushing with your shoulders. But these guys have epic shoulder strength. They might actually uh, keep their arms out, so that allows them to get a little bit lower for leverage. It is standing room only here at the Greater Columbus Convention Center. The doors open around 8.30 in the morning and this place was packed. About five minutes later, make sure that Matjaj Belshak is actually going to be up first. 
And he has a minute to go, and with those arms extended, he has that thing moving pretty well. Looks like his belt has come off from around his waist. Seconds, he's already gone 29 feet. But notice his hips are very Blood low. And he's pushing up. Now he's got his shoulder against it. His, his shoulder girdle started to get weakened. So now he's got his shoulder against it. You have to be a little creative with this event. You're just matching the event, matching this implement, doing everything you can to make movement forward, forward, forward. Inside 20 seconds to go for Matjaj Belshak, who has kept this thing moving at a pretty consistent pace, but now starting to slow. Final seconds for Belshak. And he is still giving this thing all he is worth, and that will do it. They will mark the distance and reset that, but a great effort for the man from Slovenia, Matjaj Belshak. He was able to keep up the pressure on the implement for the full minute, which is fantastic. Belshock making his second appearance here at the Arnold Strongman Classic and started with his arms extended, and that quickly changed. Yes, it did. Then he went to the shoulder, and he turned his body a little bit sideways. I think it's just a feel. It's going to be really something that the athletes have to figure out on their own as they go through the event. Notice, though, that he's keeping his hips down. Not just Kieloszkowski is next. The youngster out of Poland who has a very bright future in this sport. He's only 25 years old and has already been to the Arnold Strongman Classic five times. He's been fourth three years in a row. Belshock's score of 105 feet six inches. Eight men to go. Kieloszkowski is next. He's a taller athlete, so he might have a little bit more challenge to get his hips down. But he could just pick one of the taller implements to push. Kieloszkowski is tied for eighth after those first two events. He starts scoring some points to start moving himself up the leaderboard, and he will start the same way as Belshock did with his arms fully extended, digging in to push that wheel of pain around. Now those wheels are not solid. The wheels on which this thing turns are filled with 150 pounds of sand. That means you can't get any momentum on this thing. No, the, the sand rocks back against you, so you have to continually overcome that friction and that rocking back of the sand. But notice that the, that matting is actually overlaid to get some grooves for the athlete to push their feet against. Now going to the shoulders. Inside 20 seconds to go for Kieler Kosky trying to beat Matjaj Belsak's mark of 105 feet 6 inches. Notice the laser hanging down on the implement. It's at the bottom of that sculpted creature's head and that Helps the judges mark how far Kieloszkowski gets. That thing will rock back a little bit when he is done, but they do give him forward progress, and then they will mark that with his name plate. So Belshock is short, or I'm sorry, is still your leader, as Kieloszkowski was just a couple feet short. Okay, so he's got his he's got his hands on the implement. He's pushing. He's got his hips really nice and low. But again, the shoulders and the upper body are the weaker link in your, in your chain. So then you go to the shoulders directly against the implement, but your hips come up a little bit higher. And this implement is basically a replica from the famous Conan the Barbarian movie that starred Arnold Schwarzenegger. And in the movie, he pushed it with his arms out. Now, but that was a movie, this is now reality. Yes, correct. Gravity acts a little bit different in reality. Yes, it does, and I believe the implement that uh, Conan was pushing will probably get a little momentum, but this does not. Well, Jerry Pritchett is up next. Steve Slater is one of the judges. He is the man closest to your screen. He is instructing Jerry Pritchett. Pritchett, 60 seconds underway, and just like the other two athletes, hands fully extended and moving this thing at a decent clip. With your hands extended, you can drop your hips a little bit more, and I think that's the approach they're all taking. But that's a tremendous amount of pressure against your hands, your wrists, your elbows, and your shoulders, your upper back. 
if you follow Jerry Pritchett on Instagram, you may have seen him practicing this. He works at a at the metal fabricator for a public utilities transportation department in his home state of Arizona. He rigged up a barrel that he attached to his truck and he would push his truck up a hill to sort of simulate this. So he's kind of practiced this kind of movement. Well, that just means he's preparing. He's a professional. Not Josh Belshock still has the top mark, but we are early. This is only our third of nine athletes to go here. 105 feet, six inches is the top mark, and we're inside now five seconds for Jerry Pritchett. And Pritchett is done. It looks like he is well shy of both Belshock and Kaloshkowski. Just to call attention uh, to the deadlift yesterday, he looks like he did have a, a bit of an issue with one of his hamstrings yesterday, and um, I believe it was his right hamstring, so that's, that's a tough uh, injury to have with this event. 76 feet 9 inches for Jerry Pritchett, who was basically consistent throughout this entire push. Yes, he was, and he kept the pressure going. He's also dealing with a little bit of pain, probably cramping from that tight hamstring from the deadlift yesterday. And now the youngster, Alexei Novikov, in his first ever Arnold Strongman Classic. He was the 2018 Arnold Strongman Amateur Champion. And very impressive performance yesterday in event number two in the Husafell Stone Carry. He had the top mark until Hafthor Bjornsson came out and beat it. So he's already proven that he's, he's very good with, with strength endurance events. But he is one of the lighter athletes here, just 302 pounds, 137 kilograms. And now going with his head underneath it, we saw we saw Mikhail Shivlikov do the same thing on Thursday night. It seems to be working pretty well for Novikov. Now this is an approach that I don't think we've discussed. Shoulders on it, but with his head under the implement. I hope the other guys are watching. And Novikov is threatening to demolish Machaz Belshock's top distance. He's past Pritchett. His pace has slowed, but he has about 20 seconds to go. That's how far away he is from Belshock's top mark. Resetting a little bit. Every step is points. He could take the lead. Five seconds for Belshock, and he will be your new leader. I'm sorry, that's Novikov. He passes Belshock. So Alexei Novikov once again with an impressive performance and now has the top mark in the wheel of pain. That's a thinking man. He is a smart guy. He holds a master's degree in international economics and he works as a business and financial advisor when he's not competing. Well, 113 feet. Obviously took the lead. Steve pushing his shoulder off the end of the uh, of the, the sculpted uh, animal head there. But he, but he keeps his he keeps his hips low and he keeps that pressure and that leverage going. And obviously the pain issue he's got that down as he showed yesterday with the Husafell stone. He's got a strong mind for keeping going under the pain. 113 feet for the youngster from Ukraine. And he's been impressive so far. This is the third of five events in the most prestigious strongman competition in the world. You mentioned this yesterday. I mean, this event defines strongman. Yes, it does. What happens with the Arnold is that, okay, no matter what happens with other uh, television shows and strongman competitions, this is the one that gives you street cred because it is the heaviest. It is, it is the one that has the most dominating it is the one that has the uh, most dominating uh, forces in strongman coming to bear here because they have implements and ropes behind all these implements. This is where we stand so far as Alexei Novikov just set the mark to beat at 113 feet. And now Mikhail Shilikov, who is a man who went with that similar technique that Novikov used on Thursday night, but choosing to change things up a little bit here at the start. So he started. He started with his hands out, now he's put his hands in. He's just got his shoulders a little bit closer. 
but he has an indomitable will. He's gonna he's gonna keep pushing here in a moment. And now taking a, a break and getting that thing moving again. There's no momentum advantage here. That that sand starts to move and friction starts to take hold. And now going with a similar technique to Novikov. Even pushing his hands off of his thighs. He's using his whole body. He's past Pritchett. Five seconds to go. Oh, it looks like he might be close to third. We'll have to wait for the official score, but he does not get the Machaj Belshock's nameplate, who now sits in second place. But Mikhail Shilikov, the Siberian force, applying some pretty impressive force to the wheel of pain, 103 feet. He's got his hands against the implement. Really a close hand placement, so he's not putting strain on his shoulders. And then he goes to that technique that Novikov brought out for us. And now he's pushing his hands against his thighs. But it's all about leverage. Getting low and continuing to push. Even when he stopped, he went right back to it. So he embraced that pain and kept going. Brian Shaw will be up next as they are going according to overall standings, going in reverse order. Second in the elephant bar deadlift and struggled in the Husafel stone carry. Has a little bit of a hamstring issue and there was some question as to whether or not he might even be able to continue. But Bill, I know you're not shocked to see him back here on day two. Absolutely, he's a professional, he's prepared for this. Wait for the lion to come and make a roar coming back. Brian Shaw starting the day eight points back of Hathor Bjornsson for the overall lead. The distance to beat belongs to Alexei Novikov. And Brian Shaw outweighs Novikov by more than 100 pounds. With his height and his weight, if he gets his hips down, he's going to create a lot of forward force. He's got it moving. Notice how it's one leg at a time, one leg at a time. So it's just, it really, all that force goes on one hip and one knee at a time. So he's, he's just on one, one foot for each push. Shaw off to a pretty solid start here. Quite good, actually. Very low, very low position for a man of his height. That's a lot of leverage. 20 seconds to go now for Brian Shaw, moving in a very steady clip and continuing to gain distance. And now okay, the pain is set in. He's going to this other technique as a tall man. That might not work for him because of his height. Shaw, by any means necessary, just trying to move that thing, and that'll be it. And Shaw failed to catch the lead pack there as he goes 95 feet. Not the result he was looking for. It is disappointing. It obviously, it's obvious that, this, that his leg's bothering him. He got to a good start. Got a good low leverage. He's on the end of the implement. And then he resets himself. And tries that technique, but a little taller for that, that, that technique. But he pushed the whole minute, so Brian really embraced that pain and gave his best, best effort as we would expect. It is a little difficult to tell on television, but those poles, those wooden poles where they're pushing, they are set at different heights for the athletes. They can choose where they want to push. Yes, and that was a consideration because of the different heights of the athletes. If it was too high, that wouldn't be fair to the shorter competitors. If it was too low, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be fair to the, to, the, to the taller competitors. So this is a very well, well thought out apparatus. As we said before, it's, it's beautiful and it's heavy, but it's also an engineering feat. 8,000 pounds of steel, 7,000 pounds of oak on this thing, and Martins Lisi's is up next. He is seven points back of Hathor Bjornsson. Right now, Lisi's tied for second overall. And Jan Todd stepping in for a second as Lisi's was ready to go, and now we'll reset. So Lisi's has chalk on his shoulder, so I think he's going to go to that technique that, that Novikov showed us. So only four men have surpassed the 100-foot mark. Alexei Novikov, for the second straight time, has a lead. 
at 113 feet even. He had that lead in the Husafell stone carry until Hathor Bjornsson beat it. Bjornsson will be the last man to go here. And Martins Lisi's a fifth and a fourth. And we saw him compete very impressively in, in Santa Monica. And, and you think this is an event that sets up well for him. Yes, it does, because he's very strong mentally, and he's what we would call a gamer. So when, it's, when, when, it's really, when it really counts, he knows exactly what he needs to do to, to create a result. Martins Lisi's. He grew up in Latvia before he moved to California when he was 20, and he trained by lifting stones at his grandparents' farm. His nickname is The Dragon. And Norwegian strongman legend Ode Haugen took him under his wing. He thought that he, that Lisi's was too junior to compete, offered to train him. Clearly that was a good choice for Martins Lisi's to accept that offer. Yes, absolutely. So with that, that tutelage and uh, his, his natural abilities, and just his, his determination. I know we talk a lot about determination. Everybody really wants to win. But it's being able to commit. And that's exactly what we saw in Santa Monica. He committed himself on, on the last couple of events to, uh, to take that victory. The reason everyone wants to win this, not only is prestige a factor, but so is the money. A lot of money on the line here for these strongmen. First place walks away with $72,000. $22,000 for second place, and each person will walk away with some sort of monetary reward here. But the prestige of being able to call yourself the Arnold Strongman Classic Champion, I think for a lot of these athletes, the money is nice, but I think that title might be even more meaningful for them. Yes, again, this is this is about street cred. This is the this is the heaviest event each year, and this is the one, this is like the Masters. So this is the one that athletes really want to win. Just look at this crowd that is on hand here at the Greater Columbus Convention Center. All kinds of things going on this weekend, but this strongman competition is definitely one of the main events. And Martins Lisi's is ready to go, and he will try to chase down Alexei Novikov's top mark of 113 feet. Got a good start. Hips are low, very good leverages. He's, push, he's pushing up on this implement. Lisi's with a good pace. Yes, he does. And as you saw yesterday with the Husevel stone, he's got that good rhythmic breathing, forcing air in, pulling air, forcing air into his lungs and pushing air out of his lungs. 30 seconds. He's past Pritchett. Pritchett's mark was 76 feet 9 inches. This is where it comes down to Will. What does he want to do with, the, with this implement is up to him at this point. He's now past Brian Shaw. Shaw's mark of 95 feet. And he's creeping up on Alexei Novikov. And Martins Lisi's looks like he will be your new leader. And he still has some time. And he is done. But Martins Lisi's overtakes Alexei Novikov. And with two athletes to go, he has the top mark. So again, just proving his mental, his mental strength. He fought through that pain. He had to continue on after stopping once. You thought he would do well in this, and you were right. Martins Lisi is your new leader, Bill. Yeah, so he's got good low leverages. He's got some good rhythmic breathing going to get past this. And now he's just in the pain zone, he's pushing, pushing. He knows that, that he's got a lead coming, and he makes it. 119 feet. Nine inches for the Dragon, who is currently tied for second place and trails half for Bjornsson by seven points. Rano Heinla is the man tied with Martins Laces, and he will be up next getting some final instructions from Steve Slater, one of the men responsible for helping to construct this Ladies and gentlemen, impressive we implement. Right now. If you notice, he's got chalk on his shoulders. I think everybody's keeping this possible. Uh, avenue open of putting their shoulders on the implement. So a little bit of chalk. All right, clock is set. Remember, they're only the able to push from the rope section. Yes, they cannot They cannot push on the on the uh, creatures, uh, the sculpted creatures on the end. I think that's a fragile part of this. They don't want to break the implement. 
but being as far out as possible for leverage is what the athletes are trying to do. Ronald Heinle from Estonia up next. The top mark belongs to Martins Lisi's 119 feet, nine inches. He's got some, a little bit of a momentum going as much as you can create. He's good and low. Looks like he's got a good breathing pattern going. He's got really good hip flexor strength, as you can see in his deadlift technique. Now he's down to the shoulders. But still good, good low hips. And he continues to move forward. Yes. So you take out the weaker musculature of the shoulders and, and pushing the implement, but your hips come a little bit higher, and you can't lean into it quite as much when you go to this technique, but it does, it does help create a little more force forward and that, the, that it's on your shoulders. And each of the athletes that appear to also have learned that they can push against their thighs. That's just happening. He's not thinking about that. He's just doing everything he can to overcome this implement. Final seconds for Heinla. Breathing hard, in, out. And he is done. Wow. Couldn't see the nameplate, so we're not sure exactly where he is, but that was a very impressive effort. He is short, obviously, of Martins Lisi's. This is and how one man to go. competition is. Look at this. We're right. Wow. So Highland in fifth place currently. Highland needs to be helped off. 102 feet, 9 inches for Rano Heinle. And that means that Martins Lisi's will move ahead of him in the overall standings. And only one man remains, and that is the mountain. But Rano Heinle did a pretty good job of keeping forward momentum on this thing. Yes, he did. Good low hips, and he gets his shoulders behind it, pushing against his thighs, trying to squeeze every second out of this. And just to show you what kind of implement this is, the Wheel of Pain, watch how he collapses when he finishes. Look at this. That just tells you how they've exerted themselves. Again, this thing weighs 20,000 pounds. And the effort to push it is basically similar to the effort it would take to push a fire truck. Yes. Martins Lises is your leader, 119 feet, 9 inches. Hathor Bjornsson, who has won the first two events here, is the last man to go. And here we go. Hathor's from Iceland. He's going to call on. He's going to call on a lot of spirit. In Icelandic, they say "komasar," which means "come on, let's go." Bjornsson moving extremely well here. As long as he doesn't finish towards the bottom, he will remain your overall leader. And now he's starting to get to the tail end of things. Is he's chasing down Jerry Pritchett and Brian Shaw, and now going to that. Style we first saw that Alexei Novikov employ inside 30 seconds. 20 seconds. There he goes. He passes Pritchett. This one will be close. Yes, every name that he passes is points. But he's keeping it going. He's got his shoulders against it. He's keeping his hips low, even for a tall man. That's where Lisi's nameplate is, and Bjornsson is quickly approaching that final seconds. And Hafthor Bjornsson oh. may not have gotten there, but he was close. He might have been a few inches short, and he collapses as something finally brings down the mountain. And we will have to look where the official measurement is, and it looks like Martins Lises just edging out Hafthor Bjornsson. But Bjornsson, with a second-place finish in this event, unofficially will rack up nine points, and he will remain your overall leader And Martins Lises is climbing now the wheel of pain after conquering this implement. Crush your enemies, see them driven before you and hear the lamentations of the women. Wow, just by a few inches. So those are very valuable points. So when Half Door passed, when Half Door passed those other athletes. And Half Door Bjornsson is still down. Just being checked out by the medical staff as a precaution. What an incredible effort from Bjornsson. Won't win every event, but he is still your overall leader. He will have 29 out of a possible 30 total points with two events remaining. And he's going to be a tough man to catch on that overall leaderboard. As the medical staff now helping Bjornsson to his feet as he looks to be right now okay. 
He completely exerted himself. So just six inches separating Martins Lisi's from half Thor Bjornsson. Alexei Novikov continues to impress. Another top three finish for him. 113 feet even. Matyaj Belshak and Mikhail Shivlikov rounding out the top five. Jerry Pritchett and Brian Shaw, ninth and eighth respectively. And Brian Shaw, a man that we thought would push Bjornsson for the lead here, has falling back now farther on the overall leaderboard. So one more look at Martins Lisi's winning effort. What impressed you the most about what he was able to achieve? Just his mental strength. He's obviously a world-class strong man, and he's got he's got the he's got the muscle power and the and the strength to do this to, to do this event. But he just overcame the the implement in the end with his with his mind and his will. Hafthor Bjornsson is up. It looks like he is okay. But when you exert yourself that hard for that long, it is obviously going to take its toll on you. Most important thing for Bjornsson, though, although he did not win the event, he is still winning this competition. Well, this is the wheel of pain, and you can see that it makes these men succumb within a minute. Martins Lises has now separated himself and now stands in second place all by himself and has cut into Bjornsson's lead, but only by a point. Alexei Novikov, the impressive rookie, moves into third, and it's Ron O'Heinla dropping to fourth. Brian Shaw is now 14 points back of half Thor. Bjornsson, Shaw looking for his fourth Arnold Strongman Classic Championship, and this is how close. Event number three, the Wheel of Pain was just six inches between the mountain and the dragon. And the dragon wins out in this battle. I think this implement will be back. We talked yesterday about the implements being as much of an attraction as the strongmen, and people have been taking pictures of this thing all week long as it has been here at the Greater Columbus Convention Center for a while as Martins Lisi has received some treatment. But to see it in person and to understand, the, like you said, the, the engineering achievement that it took to build this thing is just amazing. And we look forward to possibly seeing the Wheel of Pain in future strongman competitions. Martins Lisi's finally bests the mountain and wins his first event of the competition as the Wheel of Pain does not disappoint. We are through three of five events here at the 2019 Arnold Strongman Classic. Stay with us coming up later. It's the Austrian Oak.